All right, we'll get started then. Hello, everyone. Thank you all for uh, coming out and being here for our virtual parent session. Um, it's easier just to run these sessions virtually now, especially um, just to get all this information out. Um, additionally, um, as I mentioned to the folks who are just coming in, um, I will be sending out this recording to everyone via email. Um, so if you do need to leave for whatever reason, um, you can. Uh, but if you wish to stay and ask questions at the end, uh, we will have time to do so. Additionally, if you have a question while we're doing the presentation, I have my co-RLC, uh, Vanessa Karim, in the chat. Uh, she will be assisting me with the tech pieces of this presentation. So if you do have a question, you want to ask it as I'm going along, you definitely can. Um, again, just housekeeping items. I ask that everyone uh, keep their mics muted. Um, just we don't deal with any feedback as I'm going through the presentation. Um, and you do not have to have your camera on. Um, we are recording the session, uh, so it is uh, up to you, uh, not a requirement. Um, but yeah, okay, I'm going to get us started here um, with this presentation. Uh, this presentation is tailored specifically for all of you, the parents, the guardians, um, the folks who have you know worked so hard to provide your students the opportunity to be a post-secondary and to live in residence. Uh, so first off, hats off to all of you um, for doing just you know an amazing job and getting them here in the first place. Um, this presentation is gonna go through quite a lot of information, uh, but again, a majority of it is tailored specifically to the parents. That's why we do this session for the parents specifically. Um, so just you know briefly to kind of cover everything in residence now this is it boiled down to a very fine amount um but you know what are the things included what do students get when they come into residence um we have you know start off our maintenance team that is available um for maintenance staff maintenance orders um if there's anything wrong with the room students are able to put in maintenance requests um those requests come to our maintenance team and then they are dealt with and communicated uh within you know 24, 48 hours, and we do work on like a severity basis. Um, so if you had a much more severe uh, break or something very important in the room that needed to be fixed, it would be moved up in terms of priority versus like maybe, um, you know, a door handle is a little finicky. But at the end of the day, all of them are dealt with and uh, then communicate to the students when they have been uh, checked and looked after. Um, internet, so we have our ResNet 2.4, ResNet 5. Uh, both Wi-Fi is available to students and residents. Um, students can also access the Ethernet ports. That just requires reaching out to our IT department uh, to get those activated for them uh, and then sorted that way. Letter mail delivery. Um, so we have mail that comes to both buildings, T2 and T1. If you wish to send something to your student um, or students or whatever the case may be, you can send it to um, Trafalgar 1 or Trafalgar 2. The Trafalgar 1 uh, mailing address is 1410 Trafalgar Road, and then for the Trafalgar 2 building, which is the big gray one, that is 1400 Trafalgar Road. Both of those can be found on our website um, or sent to you upon request uh, if you're looking to send any sort of mail. Um, air conditioning, heating, you know, obviously all included in a communal living situation, laundry facilities available, common kitchens available, common spaces available for students to book and socialize in, uh, Walmart delivery uh, for groceries for students, um, obviously understanding that not all students are going to have access to a car or even the bus system. Uh, so Walmart delivery is something where the we have available for students to order directly from Walmart uh, for free of charge coming in on Wednesdays. Uh, for folks to receive their grocery orders. So, you know, if your student is reaching out to you and saying they're struggling getting access to groceries, I would highly recommend that they take advantage of this. Um, On-site canteen snack stations, these are things that we've just implemented this past year, including, you know, a full snack station, um, you know, to-go sandwiches, to-go uh, hot meal items, frozen meals. Uh, so again, like something directly in the residence for students to grab food from. Uh, and we also have a couple of fruit, food options just across the way, uh, across the street for students to access.
Okay, hello. Apologies. Um, technical issues. Let me get this all sorted again. Okay. Froze during the canteen talk. Thank you very much, Eric. I appreciate it. Good to know where I left off. Um, and then we're going to hit share on that. Thumbs up, we're good. Everyone can, yeah. See? Perfect. Okay. All right, uh, where was I? I was on Canteen, which was like a whole bit ago. Let me get back there. Yeah, so we have Canteen Snack Stations for students uh, to access in-house. Um, a great place to grab some food. Um, front desk and residence staff. So resident staff, resident security. So a couple things that we do in residence. Um, just hold on one second. All right, so front desk, resident security. Um, so our desks are staffed 24 hours a day um, for our front desk staff team. Um, that means there's always someone available to help your student and if they need someone. Um, guest sign-ins. So as of right now, our guest sign-ins are closed. And the reason we do that just for the first week is because um, students are, you know, it's the first week of school. Students should be taking this time, this opportunity um, to connect with folks in residence and build residence community and make friends. And sometimes when students are signing in, they're, they're from home friends and folks maybe that they're already friends with it, and kind of takes away from that opportunity. So that's kind of where we started with offering or doing the zero tolerance guest policy at the beginning of the year. Um, it also just helps, you know, everyone in general, you know, just get their feet settled and within residence and within school uh, before then kind of going in full force into the academic year. So after September 12th, guest sign-ins will be allowed. You go into the front desk, the students can sign in uh, any guest at that time. Uh, and they'll also be signed in in our Envoy system. Uh, it is a huge, you know, safety thing for us, just making sure we have an understanding of who's in the building at what time um, and make sure the students are following our, following our guest policy. Uh, we have controlled ent entrances at both buildings uh, with key cards and key access um, just to make sure, again, as a safety precaution. Uh, we have cameras in all the buildings as well so we can look back on camera footage if need be. Um, and then in terms of security, we work very closely with the Sharon Security offering a Sharon Safe Walk program for students um, looking for, you know, support walking either from the college to the residents, vice versa to um, even the parking lot to cars. Uh, Campus security also does rounds consistently of the campus uh, multiple times during the day. Um, so, you know, they're always present and available. Uh, and I had mentioned front desk. I also mentioned our resident advisors. Um, so our resident advisor team, this is a group of upper year students who live on the same floors as uh, your kids, your students who are here. Um, and the reason why, you know, we have them here, that's basically as a mentor role, someone to provide support and guidance to the students who are coming in to this huge transition, this huge change for the first time. Um, so they have resources to provide. They run events monthly. Each of our 11 RAs is running their own individual event every month, along with myself and Vanessa running large scale programming. Um, so when your students contact you being like, oh my God, residents, there's nothing to do. Uh, I highly recommend they reach out to the front desk, join our discord to get an understanding as to what are the events that are happening? What are the things that are happening at the college? What are the opportunities that they have? Uh, to make friends and to build connections and to make the most out of this residence experience. Um, a piece of that also comes with residence council. Uh, you know, we want to make sure that students have a voice and that their opinions are heard. And residence council is exactly, you know, the best way to do so. Um, so students can apply to join residence council. I'm actually going to be reaching out to them very shortly within the week uh, to see if anyone is interested. So maybe you know your your child to be um, one of the, you know, leadership type that would love a position like this. Hey, maybe like let them know that this is a thing if they don't know already. Uh, into a bit of the boring stuff, um, really quickly, payment deadlines, just so, you know, everyone is aware. Um, when you came into residence and you applied, there's a couple options where you could choose from for the payments, option one, two, and three. 
depending on the one you chose, the dates are up there. Um, if you'd like to take a screenshot, uh, I welcome you to take a screenshot at this point. Again, I will be sending out this uh, presentation to everyone um, via email, so you will have it. Um, also, all these dates are available on our website. Um, so just important to note, especially if you chose option two or option three. Winter break. Um, so something important to note is that the winter break is not included in residence fees. Um, so that means the residence as well as the college closes during this time, but it's a weird, it's a different type of close. And there's a reason why we bring it up at this point during these parent sessions. Um, so let's say your student, you are a domestic uh, student, they're living, you know, one hour, two hours away from the residence. Um, you know, during this winter break, we're expected that students go home for the holidays. Uh, and, you know, there'll be a period of time that students have to move out of residence. Uh, and the latest time being December 17th at 11 a.m. But usually it is 24 hours after the student's last exam. So if their last exam is on the 13th, uh, they would be leaving on the 14th. Then we do a quick inspection of the room, make sure that there's no uh, food that's been left out, lights have been turned off, stuff of that nature. Um, and then we kind of switch into our winter break mode. If your student is an international student and, you know, prices for flights are just absurd and, you know, it's really, you know, kind of out of your hands and you're not really looking for the student to take on that financial burden of finding a way back home, uh, that is totally okay. Students can stay over the winter break, um, even domestic students as well. We just do it for a fee and I believe the fee is $300 for the winter break period. Um, However, for international students, if it's a situation where uh, flights are just too expensive or, you know, there's some sort of situation where they cannot get a flight home, um, we, we're not going to make the student pay. That, that'd be a little unfair of us uh, to charge a student $300 just to have the place of stay at which they're staying. So um, if that does apply for your student, please let them know that they do not need to pay and they can stay here for the winter break. Um, it is not an issue. We'll send out more information as we get closer to the winter breaks directly to students. Um, and when I say directly, I mean to the emails that students used when they're creating their, uh, their applications. So I highly recommend that they check that on a regular basis um, as that is gonna be the main way that we communicate with students. All right, <clears throat> so with all that said and done, it's kind of important we get into uh, the nitty gritty to like this presentation. Um, and what to expect with the student transition and the student life cycle and what your child might experience uh, coming into residence. First and foremost, obviously, homesickness. It's going to happen. Uh, students are in a new place for the first time. It's going to be different uh, from home. They're not going to have, you know, mom and dad uh, supporting them, providing food every day and all the nice things that, you know, now they're going to realize, oh, oh my God, like, I, I wish I had that. And, you know, you better expect a conversation probably later where they realize, oh, wow, there was so much that y'all did for us and we didn't even realize and we took that for granted. Um, I know I experienced it when I was in residence um, and I, a lot of students experience that uh, being on their own for the first time. But how to deal with this? Um, students go through it. Obviously, we do a lot of programming and events and support to help students through this part of college. Um, but that doesn't mean that they're not going to go to you for support. Uh, and where does that, where do you come in and where do we come in in terms of what that support looks like? If you have a student and they're dealing with homesickness, listen to it, be there, you know, connect with them, have those conversations. Going home can't fix it all the time, right? Um, so it's important that students are facing these hurdles and kind of not just bypassing the wall when the wall comes up. Uh, so have them encourage them to reach out to resident staff encourage them to reach out to their ras encourage them to reach out to myself and vanessa we are people that are here on site readily available to support your students through these experiences and you know we've had these conversations hundreds of times and been able to support students through it so i understand we understand it is a very difficult transition um, but you know sometimes the best support is guiding them to the residents and folks here that can support them through a difficult time and a difficult change like this. Um, and in a way, homesickness can be a good thing. Like I was saying, it's a wake up call, you know, 
and students kind of realize, okay, we need to make things happen for ourselves and they need to take a little bit of the responsibility in this end. Um, it helps them work through and become aware of the resources that are available, not only here in residence, but at the college. So counseling, support services, academic advisory, all these things that they might be struggling with. Um, all these, you know, these are involvement opportunities that they might not recognize or realize are available to them. And then sometimes, you know, dealing with these feelings of homesickness is what kind of sparks the, okay, but what do I do now? You know, and that's what then leads to the positive change in the student's life. So what else to expect? Uh, mental health. It is a real thing. It is a serious thing. And as you know, you know, we're an arts campus. Uh, we deal with a lot of mental health and a lot of mental health um, concerns, uh, but there's a lot of things that we can do in the residence side to, on the residence's side to support students. Um, so from the college specifically, um, obviously we're committed to student, to student success. Um, we have resources available. We have counseling. We have student support. We have academic advisory. We have B104, which is the Student Rights and Responsibilities Office, um, and case coordinators who are folks that are like Specific, specifically designated to providing mental health resources to students and getting the whole college connected in that support plan. Uh, so if it is a severe case or something that where there needs to be any sort of intervention or support from the college side, case coordinators and folks that work as student rights responsibilities can take that on and then you know provide the students specifically with all of the resources that they need. But a big part of this is also the residence's side because we're going to be you know on the front lines communicating with the students connecting with the students and that's what the ras are here for they're able to guide students to these resources and to these types of supports as well as to vanessa and myself who are on call uh 24 7 and we trade off on call weeks so there's always a manager available uh for someone if there's a student struggling if let's say you know your child is experiences panic attacks experiences um any sort of spiraling or any sort of, uh, you know, depression, anxiety, a lot of these are very common. Uh, and so we are available to assist in the moment, if that is the case, and then from there, provide them the external resources and the resources at the college um, to help them and their success as a student moving forward. Uh, so if you know, if your student reports these things, and they start communicating these feelings, or whether it be something you're aware of before, or this being something brand new that they're experiencing, please encourage them to seek help, seek resources on campus. Um, you know, if you're concerned for your students well being in a moment, you know, we can do wellness checks and we can check in on those students uh, on a need, you know, on a needing basis. Uh, and that's something that just, you know, we do and we have available to do here. Um, again, this student partnership and this um, success based model is between you know the college the residents and at home and we're all going to be taking part in supporting you know your child and their success here uh, at Sharon College and at Sharon Residence. Um, so you know communication is a big piece and you know making sure that they know all of the resources that are available to them because there is a lot and uh, I to always tell students over and over and over again you know if you struggle with any sort of mental health issues or require that support now is the time now is the time to access these resources because once you are out of college uh what would have been maybe a one to two week wait becomes a six week six month even sometimes a year wait for specialists uh so i highly recommend that they access those resources uh sooner rather than later roommate conflicts your student uh your child is living alone with a brand new person and we have 824 different people living in this building. It is going to happen, right? You know, this is just a fact of life, living with a new person. It is going to come with its own trials and tribulations. Even if your student selected that person, we had a selection period for students to select their roommates off the beginning, like at the beginning of this process. And even if they didn't select someone, they were selected and put roommate matching based on the roommate questionnaire that they filled out. Regardless, you could have two people who are the best of friends. Sometimes it just doesn't work out in a roommate scenario. Um, so being mindful that no two students are the same. Everyone is coming from their different story, their different past experience. Um, and it means that there are many opportunities for compromise and learning to live with another person. Uh, roommate matching, again, based on the basics, 
and the students have filled in the blanks we match based on that communication is the big thing here it's key students will you know you come in you meet a new person you're scared to meet them and then boundaries aren't communicated or a roommate contract which we've provided to all the students to fill out together as like a baseline here are all the things to kind of consider where how do we feel about these topics that's like our intro conversation to living with someone else and we provide those and we refer back to them as the year goes on so every student has it. it's been sent to their emails i highly recommend that they complete that with their roommates and sit them down and have a conversation of hey uh, you know, how do we feel about these topics? How do we feel about guests? How do we feel about noise past a certain time? How do we feel about dishes and doing garbage and, you know, all these things? Like, do we want to work out a system? Do we just fill, take out the trash when it's full? And everyone's going to be different on how they wish to, you know, go about these challenges, right? Additionally, this is also where our resident advisors come in. They can provide third-party mediation for these conflicts that may arise, right? Um, so, you know, if they need advice about a situation with their roommate or, you know, any sort of conflict that they've received or there's something occurring in their living situation, I recommend that if you hear about this, you know, from the parent side, because you will, you're going to hear about it. Your students are going to speak to you and tell you about how life is in residence and their roommate, um, you know, encourage them to speak to their RA if there are issues, because they will be able to come in, refer back to this roommate conflict, the roommate contract, and then you know, offer resources and support and ideas on how to change things moving forward. So it's better for both students. Um, additionally, with this, it's important to note we're at a full house. There's 824 students and 824 spots full, meaning it's not as simple as, oh, my roommate's not doing their dishes. I need to be moved. You know, like, obviously, you know, we provide support. And if there's nothing like, you know, if it's the last move to be made, we will make that move. But there's a process in which students need to go through before that happens, especially in the first week, you know, first week, first month, like that is just a week and a month of living with a person and there's seven more to go. So you need to consider that in the wide range of things here. Um, students will get frustrated and there might be a concern and they think, oh my God, like this is the end of, I can't live with this person, you know, and it's understandable and these are real concerns. But again, this is part of learning to live with a new person learning to live what do you do when conflict arises do you throw in the towel and say okay you know guess i gotta move out of residence or do you you know work on that and do you try and make the situation better and that's why the ras are here that's why myself and vanessa are here there's a process of you know if the ras can't solve it they take it to us if we can't solve it we take it you know further and then if nothing can be solved then we look towards a room switch but Again, it's not, we're not jumping from step one to step seven. We have, you know, two through six to go through first. Um, and it's important that students recognize that. Communication is the start of all of it. So obviously, you know, that's what we want to encourage. Coming home. So when the student comes back from residence, whether it be through winter break or reading week or at the end of their stay, What's there to understand? So your student, you know, they might have difficulty returning home after experiencing life on your own. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have experienced that first time on your own away from parents in your lives and know, you know, the freeing feeling it was uh, and how exciting it was. And, you know, they might come to residence and thrive and realize, wow, you know, like I am living my best life. My grades have never been higher. My friendships have never been stronger life just like things are good and that's not anything to speak to you know yourselves or your home situation it just means that you know maybe this is the kind of environment that they thrive in and that they enjoy and at the end of the day we all want what's best for the student and so acknowledging that right you know new habits they might be accustomed to only caring for their own personal daily routine and not the families or whatever that looks like and living under a different set of house rules so just being mindful that like eight months away that changes a person right um, so just be ready for that, you know, be ready for a different person coming home, maybe a more mature student, maybe someone who's kind of had this experience and now understands the struggles of which living on your own entails and now can respect what you have done for them, you know, for all these years, right? Uh, new expectations. Students may go home with different expectations for themselves, family members. It's a transition for everyone, not just our students, but for all of us involved, right? Privacy. This is an important piece, right? You know, safety and security is 
our number one priority when you have a communal living situation in residence. Uh, and let's say you need to reach your student. Maybe you've been texting and calling and they have not answered and you are concerned and you're like, you know, I have not been able to reach out to them. I haven't heard from them. I don't know what to do. Or maybe you're coming to pick them up and they're not answering their phone. We can't just let anyone into the building. We can't let anyone, you know, just call and say, like, you need to tell me where my child is. And I can understand that it is your child. But at the same time, if it's over the phone, there's no way for us to confirm that you are, in fact, the parent. Right. We can't ask for, you know, a documentation. I can't ask for um, the paperwork to confirm that they are your child. So we can't provide, you know, the students, you know, phone number, room number. We can't you know, confirm that the student lives here. So you may ask questions about this stuff and you'll get an answer from our staff that is ambiguous and, you know, be like, hey, listen, like, uh, I can't provide that information about the student because at the end of the day, once they are living in residence, they are their own resident. They are their own adult and treated as such in the situation. So we can't provide a lot of this information. Obviously, if it's an emergency and you are the emergency contact, that is a different context. That's a different story. Um, if an emergency contact needed access or whatever the situation was, uh, you would come to us and we'd absolutely be able to facilitate that. So do not worry in that sense. Um, but what can we do in these situations where you need to get a hold of your student, they're not answering, you're concerned, rightfully so. Um, well, you can call us, you can let us know, give us a little bit of information about the situation. We will not confirm that the student lives in residence even though you might know and we may know that they live in residence, but we cannot you know, verbally confirm that. And that is just safety and security and us upholding that, right? Um, we can say that we'll leave a message and then what we can do afterwards is follow up, assuming that the student lives there. We will never confirm as student lives there, but we will follow up assuming so. And then in that conversation, I would be having with the student saying, hey, you know, your parent, X, Y, Z, is concerned and hasn't heard from you in so many days. Maybe you should call. Maybe you should reach out. Maybe you should connect with them, right? Uh, and then hopefully they go ahead and do that, and then we move on from there. Um, again, same thing. We'll not respond to, uh, you know, disciplinary status, financial account status. Um, everything has to go through the student because this is the student that's living here, and they are the resident. Um, providing information about students' roommates, anything of their personal information will not be provided. Um, and we will not be allowing access to a parent or guardian, like to the student suite, especially without them present. So again, keeping that in mind in these situations, obviously if it's an emergency, that is a different story. And we will address that on a case by case basis with myself and Vanessa. But otherwise you will not be given access. You have to be with your student at all times. Cannabis, um, you know, for our folks coming into maybe Canada for the first time, uh, you might not know that uh, cannabis is legal in Canada. And what does that mean? You know, students partake. Um, well, first off, we are on a smoke-free campus, meaning that there's not smoking, no smoking cigarettes and no smoking cannabis, um, not only inside residence, but in on the college campus period. Uh, students can consume off campus, but they cannot do it in here or on our property or within the building. It's a fire safety issue, um, big fire safety issue. Um, additionally, you have to be 19 years of age, same with alcohol, uh, so that just is a given, laws of the land, uh, we follow those as we are in Canada. Students cannot sell, grow any sort of cannabis substances in residence for any reason. They can possess up to 30 grams of dried cannabis in a sealed container. And we ask for a sealed container, a container that is going to withhold, like hold the smell inside it so it does not affect anyone else in the living situation, whether it be the roommate, whether that be adjacent rooms, people in the hallway. Uh, the whole thing about cannabis usage is we do not want the effects of which imposing any changes to, or any effects on anyone else in the residence, uh, whether that be in how the student is acting or the smell or any of those, right? So, cause everyone has the right to the space. Final thoughts, last couple of things. Sorry for taking all this time and all the issues we've had, but we made it through. Uh, First thing, stay connected, but not too connected. And what do I mean by that? So obviously check in with your student. This is a big change, right? And they're not used to maybe living alone and experiencing all these things. So check in, connect with them, a couple texts, a call every once in a while, maybe set up something regular with them to check in. Uh, but calling every day, 
might or texting every day might have negative effects right they might feel like oh my god my parents are breathing down my neck and they won't let me live alone so make sure you're providing them the space to get the most out of residence right staying connected but not too connected you're providing support you're checking in you're seeing how they're doing but you're not constantly all over them 24 7. encourage them to use their supports so the resident advisors who are with them on their floors running events doing meetings monthly um, checking in we do community check-ins uh, on the students uh, bi-monthly to make sure like you know see how they're doing with the transition uh, counseling services service the college financial advisory academic advisory uh, the list goes on and on and on uh, but please like encourage them to access these because they'll know like they might know it exists and then they'll say oh yeah that exists but really it's about you know taking the next step to advocate and go yeah. and accessing these supports uh, empathize with them right they're going to be making mistakes it's going to happen it's their first time living away from other people you know be mindful that this is going to be a learning opportunity and that they need to, they need this opportunity to grow encourage them to make the decisions on their own to be the guiding force in this journey that they're going to take um this is where the independence grows and this is where it's going to go a long way um letters and care packages it can be tremendously helpful you know maybe they're struggling with classes and then out of the blue they receive you know a nice little welcome package or uh some food from home or something nice that you know will get them through those tougher periods like exams finals um you know heavy project weeks especially for folks that are in very demanding programs uh you know these are all the things to be mindful of and things too that will help and build a positive experience for the students and everyone involved encourage the student to get involved you know that's the best way to get connected to meet people and to know what's going on in residence and at the college um you know developing support groups and making the whole experience for themselves and others a positive one uh maybe they're struggling making friends maybe going to events is not their thing maybe they're more of an introverted person and you know we have a lot of introverted folk in residence and that's why we've created the discord as an opportunity for them to connect with people in a virtual setting that they might feel more comfortable rather than in person um, but encourage them to get involved in residence res council the college that can be a really great way for them to make friends while also experiencing college through a different lens um money management strategies that's a big one they're living away from home for the first time um there might be a couple extra uber eats orders on the bill uh for the month or pizza orders it's gonna happen um maybe if they're struggling in that department or if that is just a struggle in general um have them reach out to financial advisory they do a lot of uh, money management strategy events and programs and sessions that they run all year long they even have them i'm pretty sure they're running weekly right now at the college um if not monthly uh and then our ras are going to be running money management uh events and tips and tricks uh for you know grocery shopping on a budget for the first time and uh eating you know when to eat out and what's the cheapest places and the best places to eat and how to get the most for your money out of these situations and then lastly you know pat yourself on the back you did a fantastic job you got them here um they're excited to be in residence we're excited to have them uh and you've you know supported and guided them all this way up until this point and it is now time for them to kind of you know take the foundation that you've laid and really build the type of person that they are and that they're going to be and a lot of that is thankful to you so again hats off to all of the parents and the guardians and everyone who have brought your students here to have this experience goodbye for now uh, but wait where do i go with questions um what is our time as i quickly check um it is 6 37 meaning that we are kind of scheduled from here on until seven o'clock um if you have questions you can toss them into the chat i see a lot of chat uh movement already uh vanessa is probably doing her best with all of these um if your question has not been answered or you have a different question that you'd like to ask verbally you can i just ask that you use the hand raise function um, and then I will call on you and then I can answer that question while Vanessa is answering them in the chat. Um, so with that said, I will hold off and we will continue recording to answer some of these questions. Um, and then 
from there, uh, we will say goodbye at seven o'clock. And if your question is not answered, uh, feel free to send an email directly to myself or Vanessa with those questions and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, Andrew, I see your hand up, feel free to unmute. Yes, thank you. And uh, thank you for the presentation. I thought it was really good. I would like to know just for, for the purpose of uh, understanding why there are no locks for the bedrooms for the two residents within the residence room specifically correct yeah yeah um so again both these buildings are pretty old and they're without the right and they weren't necessarily designed um with the locks in mind um it is in part uh, a safety you know there is a safety piece to it um obviously there's a concern you know for students and like their own personal items right you're living with a new person um and what if they're bringing a guest over and all these different you know what if they go into my child's room or maybe you know the student in this situation they're like what do i do like i have this stuff that i really care about i don't want it touched um well first and foremost um like you're not allowed to put your own lock on the room and that's a safety issue let's say like we needed to get in for a medical emergency and the door was locked. Then we'd end up having to break down that door to try and get to the student. God forbid we were in that situation, right? Um, but, you know, if there are valuables that the student is concerned about um, and that they're worried about necessarily like a roommate coming into the suite, um, I encourage you to get one of those small, they have the small safes that you can get um, to place items in. Uh, and then a big piece of this is also communication with the roommate if that's where the concern is. Um, about you know what guests are we bringing in to the room? When are we having the guests? You know maybe you're more comfortable if the roommate is having guests when you're present and in your suite. Um, it's that communication piece. And if there's a bigger question onto this um, or more details to your student specific situation, um, I just ask that you send me an email and then I could like specifically address it and figure out some ways to assist. Uh, but a great question and I hope I answered it um, effectively. Uh, and I will go on to Nancy, if that is okay. I see Nancy's hand up. Hi, yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yes, all good. Okay, just, and I don't know if this is the right place to ask this question, so if you could even just direct me. Um, so I opted out of the health and dental for my daughter, um, but, um, and, and it's all been approved and all of that, but um, her tuition is due September 30th, Mm -hmm. um, and I could only put in like for a refund, but I'm just wondering, do I just not pay that 312 or whatever it is, or do I pay it in full and wait for a refund? I've, I've reached out to several people and I haven't heard. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's a great point to add here is that, you know, as the college transitions back to in-person, there's probably a lot of folks at the college who are not yet in office. And then you might mm -hmm. get a bit of a delay on your answer. Uh, plus first week is a million questions coming in, right? So um, I just, you know, be ready for that 24 to 40 hour wait for a response just in general. Um, and this is a good piece to add. Actually, the residents were not directly part of the college, meaning the college is shared in college. And then we are run and organized by campus living centers um, that are hired by the college to run the residents. Um, so technically speaking, myself and Vanessa are not uh, shared in employees but we are shared in Trafalgar residence employees. I won't have a specific and accurate answer for you. However, um, I would suggest that you reach directly out to the Sheridan Student Union, the SSU, because they deal directly with the health and the dental plans. Um, and if you want, in Zoom, there's an option where you can send a direct message. If you'd like to send a direct message to me with your email, I can send you then the emails that would be best to reach out to in that situation. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Awesome. Uh, legit. Apologies if I did not pronounce that correctly. Uh, hi. <laughs> yes. Uh, so uh, my first question is, uh, uh, so for student residents, uh, see, uh, is the grade two students still allowed to continue to live there? Uh, second year, third year, upper year students? Yeah. Yes, they are still allowed to live in residence. Um, those folks, we do have some upper year students living in the residence uh, actively. Um, and then we only offer the guarantee of residence for first year students that apply before the March 31st, uh, but yes. And the application is the same website to send out the application for this? Uh, yeah, for a second year in residence and a third year residence, exactly the same process. Okay. and. 
And the, uh, and one more thing is, uh, is the piano allowed in the residence? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, so large musical instruments in our RCLS and the SRA, which is a fancy long abbreviation for those are the rules of residence that we've provided, um, say that large instruments are not allowed. However, if this is like a keyboard piano, like a portable one and not like yeah. a hand piano, I yeah. would say that's okay, especially because some of the digital ones you can plug in with headphones so that yeah. you can hear what you're playing, but no one else can hear you and it wouldn't impose any sort of effect on anyone else. Um, so that is totally fine and allowed in residence. Okay. And, and uh, do you have a vacuum we can borrow to clean the carpet? Uh, a carpet cleaner or, or a vacuum? Specific. Vacuum. Vacuum. We do have vacuums. We are not giving them out actively right now, just for the first week, but they will be available past okay. the health for students to rent out from the front desk. So that will be available. Uh, and we found some damage on the wall and on the door. Is that okay? Or Did you make a note of it on the inspection form? Uh, yes. Then you're good. Then as long as it was noticed and recorded on the inspection form first day, you will not be charged. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Awesome. Um, from... I, Nancy, I don't know if your hand up was for another question. I'm going to go to MB first, and then if it is still a question, keep your hand up and I'll get to you. MB, uh, you are muted. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Um, is, it, is our guitars allowed? Guitars are allowed in residence, yes. Um, if they are acoustic guitars, like, again, that's fine. You can't really blast an acoustic guitar that loud. Uh, if it is an electric guitar with an amp, um, obviously the amp size, there is a limit to the size of amp that you could bring into residence. And if the student is practicing guitar, electric guitar specifically, we just ask that that volume be kept at like a moderate tone, especially considerate of other folks in the building and quiet hours. Um, so it is allowed is the okay. short form. Okay, just I, I just had that question because I heard the last one, but also, um, uh, my we live uh, in Toronto and it's pretty easy for my son to come home on the weekend. Um, would you say that it's not a maybe we should just encourage him to stay for a while, just to a case by get case to it, basis. case by case basis? I do. Mm -hmm. If you find that they're coming back like every weekend, I would encourage them to you know stick by a couple weekends. Sometimes there's an event going on and you know, really push them to get the most out of the residence experience. Um, hmm. But it is totally case by case basis. And it is up to yourselves and the students how many times they do wish to leave and come back to residence. Um, right. We've had students leave every weekend. Um, and we've had students who've stayed the entire time. So um, it really depends on maybe how you're feeling specifically with the if it's a constant thing or versus, and then how they're feeling about coming home and what that looks like. Uh, I just encourage that they stay a couple weekends, you know, give it a go, like the- Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, but yeah. totally go home, get that time to yourself. Um, I'm sure they will appreciate it. And then being able to come back to residence, it is always a benefit for sure. Okay, okay, great. I, I think I have another question, but I forgot it. So um, uh, go on to the next person. I'll put up my hand if I remember the other question. Sounds good. And if you remember it after, just feel free to send me an email. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, uh, bye bye. Sandra. Hi there. <laughs> okay. uh, thank you. The it, it's been great. A lot of information. So I really appreciate that, James. Um, I wanted to ask. I've seen in the chat some people are talking about the Walmart deliveries, and I just wanted to understand, like, is it a certain uh, like what do the, what's the process that they have to do do they have to be going to the store or can they order this online yes it is completely online so you just okay. go through to walmart.ca um, you will load up your walmart cart from there so you'll select all your items um, when you go to check out once you select the checkout button you know i think for, before that they need to make an account um, once right. they've made an account and they hit the checkout button um, it will take you to an option where it selects pickup or delivery, and it will usually say something along, along the lines of, hey, your cart is over $25, you have the option for a free, you know, pickup location. They will go to the pickup location. When you click pickup, it'll ask, it'll give you a, like a map and a huge list of options. They just need to type in Sheridan College, and it should come up, Sheridan Trafalgar College Residence. They'll select it as their pickup location, and then they will choose uh, Wednesday, 
four to five, five to six, six to seven, there's a bunch of slots available um, if it is free and available when they're looking, and then they will select that time as their like pickup time and location. That will be free, uh, and then basically when that day and time comes, they'll receive like a confirmation message email being like, hey, your groceries are here. Then the big Walmart truck comes to the front of T2. Uh, they just come over with a form of you know ID, a physical ID, and they confirm that they are who they are, and they pick up their groceries directly from the car. Uh, so no going to Walmart itself. Excellent. Yeah. And is there um, like is there a time limit that like uh, how soon before Wednesday do they need to order so they can will get the Wednesday? Depends on availability entirely. I literally just put in an order for myself today for tomorrow, and I was able to get one in. So uh, okay, so you don't okay, but yeah. it's always Wednesday delivery every it's week. Always Wednesday. You can do other days, but Wednesday is the day that it will be free. Okay, gotcha. yeah, from Sharon College. So. I always Great. encourage the Wednesday. Great, thank you. Yep, no worries. Uh, MB, I see another hand up. No, that's an accident, sorry. Oh, okay, <laughs> sweet, no worries, no worries. Um, I'm gonna kind of skim through the chat in the meantime to see if I can answer some questions. I know Vanessa has been doing a really good job of keeping up with it. Um, oh, positive feedback from the RAs, that's awesome. Alcohol policy, as alcohol allowed to be held or consumed in res for students of legal age in their rooms, not in the common spaces. Absolutely, yeah. So alcohol is totally welcome for students who are of age. We just ask a couple things to note. Number one, no single serve glass bottles, meaning no glass bottled beer. Um, that even applies for like, uh, like the Jones uh, pop bottles. Reason being the type of glass that that is and the size, when that breaks, it'll shatter and just explode essentially if it was to like fall and break. Additionally, people can break in and it could be used as a weapon. So that's why we've just complete, those are not allowed. And if a student was to like purchase it and try to bring it into residence, uh, they would be stopped by our staff members and it would be kind of confiscated and then, or it could be taken out of the residence. So, you know, you could take it and, you know, bring it home or somewhere else It just can't come in. Alcohol in general is allowed. It's allowed to be stored in the residence rooms. Um, the couple things that we ask is that students don't prop their alcohol bottles right by the window and display it for everyone to see. Um, because although it might be a fantastic collection, uh, it is more so a, it kind of promotes binge drinking and then imposes its effect on other folks who see it. So we just ask if they are buying alcohol, they're storing it, you know, safely in a way, being mindful of their roommate that is living there. And, you know, if they drink, if they don't drink, um, you're not imposing those effects. Um, Wine bottles are okay. Um, Mickey's of like the smaller Mickey's of any sort of alcohol are okay. Um, those glass bottles break differently and they break into larger shards and it's easier to clean up and ultimately safer. Um, so that all that is fine. And we also, we just don't ask like, students can't bring in the Texas Mickey's, like the really big ones. Um, so those are not allowed as well as any alcohol over 40%. Both of those are in the RCLS allowed in residence? Um, great question. Uh, I'm going to thankfulness from Westbound. Thank you very much. Is there a bulletin board for residents for, oh God, my mouse isn't working. Carpooling to and from Toronto before and after weekends. Um, so bulletin boards, yes, there's bulletin boards all over residence, not specifically for that. Um, but for carpooling to and from Toronto before and after weekends, that's a great question. Um, a couple things I'm going to recommend here. One, if we have a lot of students who maybe make friends and they have families in Toronto and they're looking for carpooling to and from, I'd encourage those students maybe to reach out to me directly. I control the Discord and I could make a specific chat for students looking for folks who are carpooling, right? And then they could all kind of carpool together. But best ways to and from Toronto, uh, we have the Oakville Go, which is literally walkable distance or a five minute drive just down the road of Trafalgar. Um, and that's like easiest access to get to and from and also like cheaper than getting an Uber. Um, so something just to keep in mind for students that are going to be coming to and from. Uh, do Sharon students get a bus pass? No, they do not get a bus pass. They get discounts on the go transit, I believe. Um, and the Sheridan shuttle used to be a thing and is no longer a thing and not running. 
so it is only public transit that is available to be picked up from the front of the building. I'm gonna try and scroll down. If your question got missed in like the millions of messages, feel free to kind of either, you know, say it verbally over here, put your hand up or pop it back into the chat if it is yet to be answered. Uh, concerning about bedroom door, let me see if I can find Lauren's comment. We have children in other university and college residents. Sorry, my mouse is uh, acting up. I'm trying to get over to the comment here. It's like a very small window. Care package program during exams. It's not really a program. I just encourage you to send care packages to your students. Um, but that's a great idea. And like we, even just today, I did a um, we did a first day of classes snack kit grab and go for the students, um, and we'll be just continually to do some of that stuff uh, throughout the year. Um, gosh, I'm sorry, Lauren. I can't. If you don't mind copy pasting, your can we just can we just read it to you? Yeah, I mean, that would be great. Yeah. Okay, I'm so uh, Lara Nems had said, uh, we have had children in other university, college residences, all individual rooms have had individual locks. The RA has a master set of keys. This is a major mm -hmm. concern for safety and security and needs to be addressed by Sheridan. Then you've got people agreeing uh, with the agreeing. I'm one yeah. of them, but um, yeah. So you've got totally very fair and a very fair concern, yeah. um, especially just with, you know, generally student safety um, as a whole. Again, we have the this is why we're also very firm on the guest policy at the front doors. Um, we're firm on the key card access and the, you know, tap card access at the front doors and the guest policy to, you know, ensure that everyone living in residence, um, you know, is supposed to be there. We have an understanding of who's here. Uh, additionally, we have the cameras. So if there was ever something you know stolen, we could look back on the cameras to see what that might be and how that would have happened. Um, being mindful that again, these are very old buildings, and this is just how the buildings were built, um, and it is a large financial um, piece to add locks onto each individual room. Uh, it's something that we can definitely look into, but even then, it's not something that we can necessarily implement right away. So this is something that I could bring to my operations manager, Mario, talk about the logistics about making a change like this. And then, you know, seeing if this is something that we could implement this academic year, or if it'd be something that we implement down the road. Uh, so a great question and a great concern. Um, but if you want any sort of follow up on this piece specifically, um, I encourage you just to send me an email and then that way I can reach out and then kind of respond back to that email with an update on what that looks like and where that would go moving forward. So not really an answer I can give right away. I apologize. I, I, no, no, and I appreciate, I appreciate it. Um, but also I would say, uh, granted, I'm sure there's a focus on stealing or breaking something or that, mm -hmm. and you're referring to that a lot. Uh, for me, I'm thinking, uh, you know, uh, being accosted, rape, many things of, of that nature. So it's, um, these are important issues. I'm, I'm shocked that, that, like, I'm wondering, has it not been brought up before? Like, it must have been, but. Right, totally fair. Um, and obviously, you know, sexual assault and sexual violence is, you know, a big issue with students coming into post-secondary. Um, really, lots of institutions, you know, struggle in this aspect, and it's something that unfortunately happens. Um, that's why every year we do um, consent and sexual health programming and events, specifically just in our orientation, we did one um, to really you know, communicate to students what consent is and that proactive planning. Um, again, as for the lock specifically, not the answer I can give right now. Okay. I can look into it and that's the answer I can give is that I will look into it and speak to my operations manager. And if you reach out to me via email, I will get back to you with an update on that specifically. As okay. for the sexual violence and you know sexual assault piece, um, I'm glad that you brought it up because there's a lot of stuff that we do in residence to make sure that 
that doesn't happen and that way that students you know know where to go god forbid it did happen uh i guess i guess what i'm where i'm coming yeah. from it's like it's uh, you know stealing and uh, that's all bad but the sexual assault like you're you're relying on your roommate who you may not know um at, and uh, that their judgment is good, not just your judgment is good, but that their judgment is good. And now you've got a yeah. third person in there and you don't have a way to protect yourself, like uh, to at least lock the door. So I'm quite shocked. And that's understandable. But I, again, I'll, I will look into the lock piece for everyone who's concerned. Okay. Um, and you. yeah, please just send me an email so I know to include you on that follow up if that is okay. And your... what, what's your email again, James? I think you may have said it at the beginning. I believe if I am correct, it's the should be sharing it. Let me just share it right now very quickly. I oh, I see. Okay. Oh, uh, sorry. My apologies. There. Is it there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll take a screenshot. Yes, please take a screenshot. All screen. right. Thank uh, you very much. Yeah, Thank no worries. And, you know, a great question. So I'm really glad that this was, you know, brought up and addressed. Um, I see. MB's hand up. I believe this is a new hand, and then we'll go Andrew, if that's okay. Also being mindful that it is seven o'clock and I wanna respect everyone's time, but MB, if you do have a question, uh, we can definitely take it. Um, I might move to Andrew if you're experiencing some technical difficulties. Yeah, uh, two questions, James. Um, sure. I sort of second the idea of the locks only because um, I was thinking about getting my daughter insurance because she does have a very expensive digital piano in her room. Yes. I hate to see that get damaged. Of and course. the first thing the insurance company is going to ask is, is there a lock on the door? And I'm going to have to tell them no. Right, which Second there is a lock on the main door, but obviously in this case, like a specific. Yeah, right. Yeah, and sorry. the second question is, is, does the bathroom door lock? Yes, bathroom door does lock. So why does the bathroom door lock if the resident room does not lock? And I wish I could give you a good answer. Um, and I was not present at this college when it was being built. Um, and I apologize. <laughs> I just, I, I can't give... <laughs> What answer can I give to be as to why that was done and then the doors were not? No, but I would suggest that you yes. look further into that because I, I, I think be. you're uh, um, you're setting us up for failure if it stays that way. To be honest with you, understandable. And I, you know, again, I, I appreciate this being brought up, and I will be following up with it. So thank you. MB, if you do have that question, um, I will take it if it isn't. Oh. Uh, no, I just don't know how to use Zoom. <laughs> That's all good. Understandable. <laughs> no worries. Right. I'm just quickly bye -bye. scanning. Okay. <laughs> all good. I'm just going to quickly scan these messages for anything else. Oh, you've gotten them all, Vanessa? Perfect. Sweet. Yeah. If if anyone else has any questions specifically to residents or anything that we talked about in this presentation, please reach out. Again, uh, thank you all for attending and being present for this. Um, great questions. And again, if you do have any others, please, please message us. Um, you have our emails uh, and you know we'll get to them. Obviously, at the beginning of the year, we're gonna have quite a few coming in. Um, so that 24 to 48 hour uh, buffer will be appreciated. Uh, and we will, you'll hear from us soon. So thank you again. Uh, have a good rest of your night. Um, and we hope to see you all. We hope to see you all later. Okay. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you very much. No worries. Thank you.